The big time buccaneers! The big time buccaneers featuring disguised toast, Ant and Ali Straza. Uh, as we're saying in the opening, you know, Ant, one of the most accomplished players in Hearthstone this year, going to the World Championship. Toast, as we learned, a rap god himself, and Ali Straza, a uh, Southern California local. So uh, maybe she'll be a little bit better adapted. Let's toss it over to Raven for a couple of words with the big time buccaneers. Thanks a lot, Frodo, and I'm joined by our first team on the stage for a few words. So first of all, Ant, we saw you at Championship stage. Now you're on the BlizzCon stage. How does it feel to be uh, America's newest Hearthstone superstar at this point? It's all gone to my head, honestly. I'm just super famous. I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm so don't ask me for photos. <laughs> wow. I'm not no, I'm not serious. No, do please do all of that. Well, you're talking to me, and at the moment, that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. And on the other side of the alley, we've not seen too much of you on a stage like this. You were at TwitchCon, of course, but uh, are the nerves kicking in now that you're here? I'm not going to lie, a little nervous, but more excited than anything, I would say. That's fair enough. And Toast, just a quick one. Have you got these wraps set up for every team you're going to face today? I hope so. Every single person, every single team. OK, I hope there's not one for me. Well, <laughs> So it'll be great to see that. those a little bit later on. So we've welcomed our first team to the stage. Let's welcome our second team for round one. Please raise a toast to our next challengers, the Jungle Giants. I am Firebat. Firebat is the 2014 Hearthstone World Champion. I'm Jack. Ballad and Doomsayer is pretty damn fine, even though it's a card that's on the sideline. And I'm Crit. I feel like they're past their best and I'm gonna have to carry both of these three. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are the Jungle Giants. Definitely wanna win. This is the first time I've been to BlizzCon. First time I've been to America. We're the team to beat because we are the best. We're gonna win this whole damn thing because we have marginal advantages in the deck lineups. <laughs> we compound the marginal advantages across the entire tournament, so the marginal becomes less marginal, and then it's like kind of okay. We're the team to beat because we've got the best standard player in the world, the best arena player in the world, and me. <laughs> the Jungle Giants! Welcome to the stage, the Jungle Giants featuring Kriparian, Firebat, and Jackie. And both Crip and Firebat have played on the BlizzCon stage before. Firebat taking home the title in 2014. Send it over to Raven for a couple words with the Jungle Giants. Thanks again, Dan. Welcome to the stage, guys. First of all, Firebat, you know, as a bit of a tryhard when it comes to Hearthstone, you know, 2014 World Champion, of course. This is a bit more of a lighthearted event, but how much have you been putting into this? Has there been spreadsheets? Uh, there's been one spreadsheet with a different page for every single team. I tried to predict everything that they would play based on the classes that were presented. So I'm hoping I memorized all of the cards in all of their decks. So trying pretty hard. Okay, no surprise there. Feeling confident. And Jackie, uh, this is a team event and you were well known for bringing things a little bit outside the box. Did, the, did these two guys try and rein you in a little bit for this one? Um, a little bit, but uh, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Mind have some memes prepared. Okay, we'll see. I look forward to it. And Crip, uh, we heard from Toast a little bit earlier on with some uh, interesting lyrics. Have you, are you going to have anything prepared by the end of the day? No, I, I, I accept it. It was, a, it was a good job. I think it was a fair slam, and uh, I hope the results uh, make him feel bad at the end of the day. Fair enough. Just beat him in the game. So let's get the first match underway. So shake hands, guys. Good luck in the match, and we'll get the first match of the Hearthstone Invitational underway. To bring honor and fame back to their inn. The big time Buccaneers versus the Jungle Giants. Let's see what you got. 
Greetings from the commentator desk and welcome to the kickoff match of the Hearthstone Invitational live from BlizzCon 2017. My name is Frode and I'm joined by Brian Kibler and we have the Jungle Giants versus the Big Time Buccaneers and a lot of nice cordial banter back and forth between these two teams. Yeah, I, I love the tone that this event has already uh, set so far. You know, you have a little bit of a little, little bit of friendly trash talk coming back and forth and I have to say that I, I really did love uh, uh, Toast's little rap diss of, uh, yeah. of, of Crypt there. And I'm hoping to see more of that. Yeah, he didn't do that in rehearsals at all. No, he, he just didn't. whipped it out live on camera. And I gotta say, man, if he's got the gall to be able to do something like that, I'm waiting to see what they have in the store for us today as we take a look at how the format is for this first match. Remember, all throughout the Invitational, we'll have three separate rounds of matches where they dip into Wild, Standard, and a new format called Excavate Treasure, with the first match, of course, being in Wild. Yeah, this match will be Wild. If you're not familiar with the formats in Hearthstone, Wild is a format in which you can use all of the cards throughout Hearthstone's history. So these decks can include everything back to, uh, to Nax Ramas. So we'll see, uh, I have to imagine, some mad scientists, sludge belchers, things of that nature that haven't really seen competitive play in a while. That's right, and the classes have been separated as such. They had to pick a strata of three classes. For example, Rogue, Mage, and Hunter were in one strata. And if, from that, you split up the classes to what you want, but you have freedom. You can freedom to build however you want. You can say, for example, I want this mage as toasted for wild. And, Toast has been playing a lot of Mage on his own personal stream, and does this really surprise us that he's choosing a deck of this kind? Not at all. Toast has been uh, well known for playing Quest Mage, the essentially infinite damage combo deck in Standard. Uh, the deck that he has built for Wild is very similar. Rather than using the quest itself, he plans to use uh, Emperor Tharrison to reduce the cost of the various combo pieces to allow him to play Antonitis plus Apprentices and just throw infinite fireballs at his opponent's face. That's right. So not quest mage, but still very similar to OCK mage, or one-turn kill, as we like to say uh, within our terminology. Now let's go ahead and look at the other team captain here, or at least the, the, one, the most prominent featured member, and that's Kriparian, the Hearthstone superstar. He's doing a, a mix-up of a good old classic Pirate Warrior that we've seen in Wild. Yeah, Pirate Warrior has been a force to be reckoned with in Wild. A big part of that uh, is the, the card in the middle there on the top, Ship's Cannon. Uh, Ship's Cannon, in particular in combination with Patches, can allow you to deal a ton of damage really quickly as you play Pirates. Uh, also has a lot of uh, burst damage potential uh, with Death's Bite Leroy, we see at the bottom of the screen, as well as the, the big finisher in Fell Reaver. Yeah, Fell Reaver, uh, definitely one of the original five mana eight eights that put a lot of pressure, not like the Pure Tide Hydra. Let's get game number one underway here. And Jungle Giants is going to be on the coin here. And of course, they draw a little bit of an awkward opening hand. And we'll see how the impact of the Fire War X nerf will go ahead and shift the Pirate Warriors plan wild. Yeah, well, he even has King's Defender. You know, yeah. the, the uh, strictly better Fire War X uh, from, that was from TGT, I believe. And uh, you can hear you can hear the, the, the players talking a little bit. We'll be able to uh, listen to see what they're talking about their mulligan stage right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how much they can. Ooh, that's a full mulligan. Okay. All right. Well, I got a lot of two drops. That's cool. We can get a two drop. Top decks. Top decks. We got this. We have 22 damage. No one leaves anything. I feel like we should try this. There's only one. Draw Patrick. I would really love for you to draw Patrick. He's thinking. Well, it seems like everything already has begun with the strategy talks on both sides, and this is something that Pirate Warrior has to value very carefully. Uh, they have a little bit of an awkward draw, and, and you don't always have to just play Pirates just because you can, even though Jungle Giants does have a line where they can play the South Sea Deckhand and the South Sea Captain. So do you think they should go on board, Killer, or hold back? I would expect them to hold back. Uh, I know Firebat in particular has played a lot of Pirate Warrior, and especially against a deck like they expect Toast to be playing uh, in this, this combo mage, uh, you often are better off getting your burst damage in at points would make it awkward for your opponent. No, it looks like he's actually going to go with Deckhand right away, gets his patches right out there. This does have the effect of even if uh, Big Time Buccaneers chooses to ping on their turn, there's still a pirate left in play to coin out the, the South Sea Captain as well, however. Yeah, I think when they recognize that Mage comes out here, and a lot of Mages in Wild format tend to be very control-oriented. There are a couple of tempo aggro versions of it, but control is very strong, especially because Reno Jacks is still available and a few other things. And it is a closed deckless format, so when you see your opponent pass on turn one, you try to see if you can pressure your opponent's life total and don't give him the time to draw the cards he needs to kill you. 
It, while it is close deck list, these players, you know, have been kind of trying to figure out what their opponents are playing. And when uh, when Toast found out that his opponent, uh, Crip, was playing Warrior, he's kind of expecting Pirate Warrior in Wild. Last night, actually, uh, I, I you know, heard him talking. He's like, I don't know if I can ever beat Pirate Warrior with my deck. And, and Ali and Amber are like, no, you have one Sludge Belcher. Just draw your Sludge Belcher. It'll be okay. And uh, keep in mind that we will be playing through the entire series as well. So even if uh, something goes disastrously wrong, you always have another chance to pick up the series later on. Yeah, the uh, team that does get the most overall game wins gets a bonus treasure as well as uh, the total number of game wins ends up being a tiebreaker just in case the, player, uh, the teams are tied in terms of total treasures accumulated. Basically, win as much as you can. And Big Time Buccaneers is going to have trouble with that if they're giving their opponents cards. Jungle Giants did not have a three-mana play, and because Big Time Buccaneers went for a Cold Light Oracle to draw deeper into their deck and get some answers, they've also given Jungle Giants some more threats. Yeah, it's a lot of resources for the Pirate Warrior, and the Pirate Warrior is, is a deck that can utilize those resources very effectively. Uh, pretty much any card you give them can turn pretty much directly into burn. Look at Jungle Giants' hand. They have all four weapon types that they would like to have in um, in their deck. They have the Exhaust First Mage, which gets you the Rusty Hook. They have effectively Fire War Axe, now reimagined as King's Defender. And they have Test Bite and Arcanite Reaper. Uh, that is way too much weapons. And they, even Leroy Jenkins is just like burst damage. So at this point, they can just all go face and pressure the life total of Mage and not give them time. And I think Kool-Aid Oracle is very tipped off the Jungle Giants and what kind of deck this mage is. Yeah, and uh, not, not, not to forget that Toast is very well known for playing these combo-oriented decks yeah, anyway. And uh, Pirate Warrior is exactly the kind of deck you'd love to get queued against, or rather queued into a, a combo-style mage deck simply because you're able to put out so much damage so fast and not give them time to assemble their combo pieces. You know, looking at uh, the Big Time Buccaneer's hand, they have two Molten Reflections, but they don't have any copies of Source and Apprentice. They don't have their Emperor Tharsin. They're very far away from being able to do their combo. This could be a really tough turn, and I want to start listening into the big time Buccaneers to see what they're talking about on this very crucial format turn. Like Nova into Blizzard? I think that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Okay. I think we just need to not take the damage, right? Yeah, we just need to not die. So kill the Saucy, yeah. And by some miracle, he doesn't by kill this. Some miracle. <laughs> We have so many. Two, we got two, yeah. one, two math scientists, one archaeologist. It'd be clutch if we could pick up a girl, actually. You think so? Oh, sorcerer's apprentice. Yeah. yeah. So we can go sorcerer, okay. couple molten, frost nova. Yeah. So uh, when Ali Strauss said pick up a girl to toast, I, I think that it might be uh, misinterpreted by some people who aren't familiar with our lingo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, sorcerer's apprentice is known as girl to many people. Yes. <laughs> Even Ann had to clarify, wait, we're talking no, about we're Hearthstone talking about, still, right? We're, yeah, we're not talking about just going and finding, finding toast to date. Wow. Well, uh, interestingly enough, Big Time Buccaneer took a gamble with Doomsayer, hoped that Jungle Giants wouldn't have damage. But Jungle Giants has recognized a very interesting opportunity to ignore the board anyways and just kill their opponents. And it's primarily based off the fact that they have 10 damage next turn with Leroy Jenkins. And also because their hands mainly weapons. They don't really need as much minion pressure. Yeah, and, and without a secret on the side of Big Time Buccaneers, they know that this uh, Leroy Jenkins just represents lethal damage. So. I like oh, the gonna dig. No, the two secrets are just a little bit off. And Jungle Giants has the direct damage to just kill Buc to Big Time Buccaneers right now. <laughs> you see, they've got a little nice. bit of a wave there, but uh, Crypt and Firebat with the IRL BM. But there it is. Ten Ips finish it off, and game number one goes to the Jungle Giants. Well, Dr. Kriparian and the Jungle Giants, and they are on the board against the Big Time Buccaneers. A little ironic that a pirate deck took down the big time Buccaneers. There's a little pirate on pirate action there, but of course it's just more, more mainly for nomenclature, no, no real actual meaning to the names other than team. Well, and, and for puns and memes. And for puns. That's, that's and the, the key, really. Well, I mean, realistically, it's quest druid against pirates, so you actually expect it to go the other way, but it's just game number one, and uh, we'll see what ends up happening for the other game. So when we return, more action here at the Hearthstone Invitational. It'll be Firebat versus Ann. Way too far away from the fire, my friends. There's more tales to tell. It's Hearthstone at BlizzCon! Everybody to the Hearthstone Invitational 2017, live from Anaheim, California at BlizzCon. 
If you were just tuning in, we have a 1-0 lead for the Jungle Giants over the Big Time Buccaneers, but we're just getting started as uh, we have a lot more hearts in the play. We have actually six matches because it'll be a round-robin format. So if you're a fan of maybe Dog and his team or Raynad and their squad, they're also going to be coming up after this match and, and playing everything there for them. So Jungle Giants currently up 1-0, and they're currently discussing strategy. And we see that they have a lot of knowledge about Hearthstone, but we also had a chance to sit down with TJ and test their knowledge about each other. The Rope! I'm joined here by the, uh, the Jungle Giants, and uh, we thought, you know, since this is a team format, we might as well go ahead and see how well you guys know each other and know your teammates. So, we'll get started with the game. This first question is for Firebat. How many Twitch followers does Crip have? A, 1,079,182. B, 1,523,104. Which one's the biggest, A? B is the biggest. All right, B. B? Crip? Do you know the answer to this? Yeah, it's A. The correct answer is A. All right, this next question is actually for Jackie Chan. Where does Firebat store his fortune cookies? Wow. Do I get an ABC? No. No ABC. No. Try and think of something that you would never expect fortune cookies to be in. Toilet? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tide container. What is that? <laughs> they don't have Tide in, in the UK, I guess. This one's for you, Crip. What is Jackie Chan's real name? Jack. One point. Going back to Jackie Chan. In what year did Crip post the first video on his Criparian YouTube channel? I want to say 2012. <laughs> I think it's 2009. Bingo. Wow, Crip, you know yourself so well. <laughs> uh, this is uh, another question for Crip. Who did Firebat defeat to win the World Championship in 2014? Um, I know who it is, but I don't remember his name. He's on Team Celestial. You got half of his name. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Someone who tiddles. Oh, Tiddler. <laughs> there you Tiddler go. Celestial. Tiddler Celestial, that's right. Uh, next question is for Firebat. Who did you defeat in the 2014 World? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a question for Firebat, though. Finish this line from Jackie Chan's Knights of the Frozen Throne reveal rap. Uh -huh. Meat wagon. It's a bit of a meme. You'll have to make a deck with a. Right. That's when you finish the rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Can I, have a go? I, I haven't even seen the meat video. wagon. It's a bit of a meme. You'll have to make a deck with a. Dream. That's incorrect. Damn. But it rhymes though. Meat wagon. It's a bit of a meme. You'll have to make a deck with a bit of a theme. And I have one more question for all of you. Uh, who's the best Hearthstone caster? Oh, uh... Bonus points for the correct answer. TJ Sanders. <laughs> wait, 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 what? Who's supposed to answer to the question? I don't even know. Was there any correct? answer to that question. I, I'm not sure. It, according to Reddit, to it's Firebat. <laughs> He's on the team, so that, that Actually, I think is probably Reddit, the correct you, answer. you, Brian Kibler. Or maybe you and Firebat make a fusion dance and somehow become one person. <laughs> Speaking of Firebat, uh, he is coming up next here in a wild deck that has been uh, very powerful, has been the Aggro Shaman. And uh, this shouldn't really come as a big surprise to many people, but one of the, so a couple of the interesting cards that people always look at are things like Hammer of Twilight, a card we don't really see at all, despite the fact that it still actually is available in standard. Yeah, and uh, this is you know a deck that has a lot of very powerful cards that just recently rotated out. The opening of Tunnel Trog into Totem Golem with the sound effect right. uh, haunted players for a very long time. That's right, and his opponent Ants will be coming up on deck here, and we'll see uh, what Ant likes to do. He's known as a more aggressive player in general, one of the few unabashed bonafide aggro lovers. However, he is playing a uh, mid-range recruit paladin, something that you actually have extensive experience about. Yeah, this is a deck that I, I like uh, a great deal. It's able to utilize uh, a lot of the, the token summoning things, the silver hand summoning cards like Lost the Jungle, Must for a Battle, uh, even going so far as to play two copies of Stand Against Darkness. And basically, if you ever get a chance to stick a board of recruits, you have Lightforge, Stegadon, and Quartermaster to make them immediately into huge threats, which can end the game. All right, game number two is about to begin, and we'll see if either of these teams can continue to either build on their momentum or will big-time Buccaneers 
equalize. And with know, the mid-range Paladin, it's very important for them to make sure that they are able to secure the board against Shaman, because if they don't, they don't have as much comeback mecha mechanisms as a normal Paladin deck with all those board clears available to them. Yeah, there are no copies of Consecration, for instance, uh, in the deck for big-time Buccaneers here. So they rely primarily on uh, just fighting for the board with their own minions. There is the copy of, of Knife Juggler we see in their hand here. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what they're talking about in terms of how they want to play this out. Yeah, and there's a lot of validity to even things like the Rallying Blade. You are primarily a proactive deck, but you're also playing against a deck that can climb and run away with the board with a Tunnel Trog, for example, or maybe even the Totem Golem with a single 1-1. One -one. You could challenge and then utilize that overload. So Big Time Buccaneers keeps the Rallying Blade. I like that a lot. And they are rewarded with a couple of other really powerful cards. Do Dark Darkshire, another uh, unsung MVP of the deck. Oh, <laughs> the, the immediate thank you from uh, Jekyll Giants as their hand is exactly that. We talked about people having nightmares about the tunnel truck into... Yeah, this has terrorized the 2016 meta all too... Uh, uh, all too well, people remember exactly what this was capable of. But uh, Buc Big Time Buccaneers does have some ways to strike back. However, Jungle Giants also has even better follow-up. They have uh, Blood Sail Corsair to knock out the second charge of Rallying Blade. They have Jade Claws to help secure the board and also push a little tempo. Uh, this is a very explosive hand from Jungle Giants. Yeah. They're deciding exactly how they want to uh, maneuver these this turn uh, here. Let's, let's listen in to see what Firebat's talking about. Divine Shield granted. We have an answer if we do Jade Claws because we got Tunnel Truck. So I think we should do Jade Claws and not give him anything to work with. I quite like the Totem Golem. I kind of like the Totem Golem too. Wait, why are you on Jade Claws? Because okay. it doesn't get punished by anything. It gets punished by their pirate. Oh, I see. If they run, who knows which pirate they run. They may run Deckhand like since the deck really often has a weapon up, but they could also play Blood Sail. I think the pirate, the, the clause is better as long as they don't have the pirate. But you said this is a card that they didn't keep and they still have cards that they kept. Two cards. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to respect that. <laughs> Just rope and then target it to me. It's fine. It's all right, overloaded with Jade Claws, of course. You said that's really good. Yeah. So they really either good. like our play, which I doubt, or they drew a really good card. Okay, muster. <laughs> muster is like the only really good card. Like if we hit the 2-2 two, two and go face and he rolls healing, you can reheal it up to a 3-4. Yeah, um, that's true. Okay, I like that. So if you're going to go Rallying Blade, you can consider hitting the 3-4 and trade off your 1-1, one, one, right? I don't hate hitting this, uh, the Golem, Trump. just because this, I mean, I don't know if we're going to juggler soon or something. Like. Yeah, I mean, the next turn is probably juggler, honestly. Right, yeah. it might be a little bit easier to deal with the Trog. Okay, mm -hmm. so we just get the Totem Golem then, right? I think so. I mean, are you guys confident in that decision? Yeah, I'm good with that. Part of me is like, oh, should we respect? The draw, but I feel like. Yeah. All right, so we're Tons tapping really into bad. the comms for Healing. both teams, and it seems like yeah, things, you know, even though they're having a lot of fun, it's become really serious and analytical. And I think Big Time Buccaneers recognize if they lose this game, they lost the series and they get to play another game, but you don't want to start off well, Blue Scott Invitational with a loss. Yeah, you're having a lot of fun uh, here playing uh, in front of this crowd, but they, they want to win. Oh, even even oh, if they're you know coming at it from a from a meaty perspective <laughs> before they got on stage, yeah. uh, they definitely want to, to come at it as competitors once they're here. This juggler has to be well. Uh, at this point, big time Buccaneers has the rallying blade shut down, so uh, that's a really big swing for Jungle Giants. Big time Buccaneers needs this knife juggler to come up big. Yep, they, we we hear them saying, "I think we go juggler," and let's see where the knives fly. Juggler into Lost in the Jungle. The best case scenario can hit the uh, patches. That is about as bad as it can get. Oh, and Flame Tongue Totem picked up for Jungle Giants allows them to make use of even their damaged minions uh, to take out all of Big Time Buccaneers' board along with the J-Claws. Well, what's interesting is that uh, Jungle Giants, because none of the juggles hit face, it actually makes a lot of the trades really poor. You couldn't overtrade on the right. Pirate, for example. Um, and I was looking at J-Claws originally for this turn. 
Um, and I wonder if maybe instead they, they think about something else, but it looks like it's too clean of a mana usage otherwise. Well, actually, it actually doesn't even need the Flame Tongue because uh, the, the Jade Claws and the, the you know, two 1-1 one, one minions trade with the, the recruits. The right. Jade Claws itself can take out the uh, Knife Juggler here. And he, this can even potentially heal, get a healing totem, which can, oh there we go, heal up the Tunnel Trog and make it even tougher to kill yeah. if they do have Muster for Battle to get that oh. weapon. Well, big time Buccaneers need some help. They're looking at a pretty bad situation that's going to get out of control in the next couple turns. That is one of the worst draws that you can look at. Divine Favor is not something that's going to be useful in aggressive mirrors, so to speak. If both decks are playing very fast onto the board, it rarely gets a lot of value. Yeah, and I think that both of uh, big time Buccaneers decks so far have been ones that are aiming to beat controlling or other mid-range style decks. And Jungle Giants, so far, they've just played aggro which has really put uh, Big Time Buccaneers' slower decks into a tough situation. All right, let's go ahead and tune into the teams again, see uh, who's going to close out this game. The 3-2 to make it a 3-3 technically is a bit helpful. I like Hero Power Flame Song. I like Hero Power Flame Song. Like they yeah. don't have a weapon. We just play Aya next turn. Yeah, we don't want to reveal ourselves. They don't have Pirate. They would have played that there 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't need anyway, to like, force a swing or anything. This is really over. Yeah, we win. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider just going face here? Mm. If we draw another uh, weapon, we can end the game with Lava Rush a lot easier. We have three weapons? I, I don't think so. No, I, I think we still win oh, the two of the weapons are five mana, right? We don't go start going face until they can start comboing something. Okay. Like, okay. We have plenty of time to get double charge in swings. The way we lose is they equality clear our board. I think we That's just like stand against darkness. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. So a quality knife juggler unleash the dudes. Yeah. Wow. Reporting for <sighs> I think we're dead. No, Jackie's laughing. We're, laughing. we're dead. <laughs> I like that they're reacting to Jackie's uh, Jackie's laughter across the board. They're like, oh, Jackie's laughing. We must just be dead, and they are. Jungle Giants close out the game to get, take 2-0 wow, lead, which will win them the series, but there's still another game to play. Yeah, very commanding uh, performance there from Jungle Giants, but you got to admit that uh, the draw kind of fell into their favor there as well. They got the ideal start that you want as the aggressive Shaman. That's kind of what the, the thing about Wild is. You have a lot of high power level, and some, some decks feel unstoppable if they get the nut draw. Yeah, and in particular, the Paladin deck does struggle to come back from the situation because it does so heavily rely on being on board. If their opponent can get on the board faster, it can really be tough for them. All right, well, currently the score is 2-0. Now, normally in a lot of Hearthstone sets, the series would be over. The, person that, the, the team that won the best of three would move on. But we're actually going to play the third game because the tiebreakers matter if we do end up getting to that point, Killer. Yeah, the, uh, the team that wins the most games gets an extra treasure, and those treasures are how we keep score in this event. All right, well, before we go into game number three, let's take a moment to learn a little bit more about the members of the Big Time Buccaneers. Well met. My name is Disguised Toast. I'm 26 years old. Ali Straza. I'm 23 years old. And I'm 25 years old. And I'm from Florida. Toronto, Canada. Fresno, California. My favorite card is Alex Straza. She is basically a badass. My battle tag comes from my weird obsession with ants. Or it's actually just my name shortened, but I like weird obsession with ants because that's what pe people think sometimes. My battle tag comes from the phrase, this guy's toast. This guy's toast. And it's a play on word, this guy's toast. This guy's toast. It's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. Shout out toast. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> The most important quality to be a great Hearthstone player is definitely resilience because you're going to lose a lot. Mental perseverance. I think the most important quality for a great Hearthstone player is flair. You got to do it in style. You got to you know, get the fans. You know, don't be boring. Just do the crazy things. Why are we going to win this tournament? <laughs> we're just going to win because we're the best. Yeah, there's not much else to it. Definitely some big words for the big time Buccaneers, and it uh, doesn't seem like it's working out, at least for the first series, but they can still play for the 1 2 score, which is very important because we anticipate a very close standing. You're only going to play three matches for each team, 
for a total of six today. So it's going to be important for Ali Straza to come up big here for the big time bucket list. Yeah, this is a round robin event, and uh, this will be the deck that Ali is playing, uh, which is a, a pretty cool version of Zoo. Uh, this is a wild version of Zoo, of course, which means that it can include cards like Nerubian Egg and Malganus Voidcaller. So yeah. lots of powerful stuff. You may have seen the uh, the Zoo decks in standard, uh, and you know, with. Things like the uh, the eggs and power overwhelming, very powerful, and also the Prince Taladrum that we saw there in the, on the uh, the screen, particularly strong when comboing with cards like Nerubian. I love it, and of course on the wild side of Jackie Chan, we like to call him Wacky Chan. We'll be bringing a hunter with a, c a couple of interesting twists here, but for the most part, kind of sticking true to what we know and love. The Deathstalker Rexar, of course, is not something that we used to see a lot in the mid-range Hunter days, so I wanted to see if that card's going to be impactful or not. It could be, it could be not, but I guess a deck that floods you, even just the battle cry might be really effective. Yeah, you know, this can be a, uh, a very powerful card against control decks as well as uh, against other minion-based decks to clear off their board, which is something that Hunter can often struggle with. So, uh, kind of old-school twists on some decks that we're actually seeing quite a bit of these days with the new school, new style play. Let's go into game number three. This will be the final game, no matter what happens. Every team will play one deck one time, win or lose. And we'll see who between the battle of teammates on Fate to Karma, Jackie versus Ali. Uh, which has been seen many times in October Brawl, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like they played a lot then, too. And this is quite the opening hand. Now, here's a question. A lot of people have been talking about the power of Zoo and how it hits the curve, but people are also talking about how Zoo has late game now, thanks to things like Blood Reaver, Gold Hand, and against a deck that likes to lower your health total, is it worth even thinking about keeping Gibbler? I, I think Gul'dan may just, be, may just be too slow here, especially against a Hunter deck in Wild. There's so many powerful things that could be doing early. Uh, I, I think that Big Time Buccaneers may need to go for just the early game, and that's exactly what they do, throwing back the Gul'dan. Okay. I mean, it's just definitely worth asking, because you already have the curve, so maybe you could survive. But uh, right off the bat there, that is kind of the exact thing you want to see if you're Big Time Buccaneers fans. Jungle Giants, unfortunately, has the bad news that they have no one mana minion. That is that is very crucial for Hunter to get off on the right leg. Yeah, Hunter, much like the Paladin we talked about in the last game, really needs to get in the board in order to be able to help control it early on. Right. Uh, there are some weapons. We saw Glaive Zuka in the hand of Mid Mulligan looking for a one drop, uh, a very powerful card that Hunter uses in Wild to help interact with the board early on. And it's compounded too. Clackling Razor Maul, one of the strongest two mana minions in Journey to Unguru released. But uh, if it has nothing, it's just pretty much a vanilla 3-2, like a Bloodfin Raptor. Well, Big Time Buccaneers already has some decisions with our one drops here. Uh, let's see what they're thinking. Right. Or, like, we can pop with Guy, like, trade Flame Imp, and then pop Trap with, like, Voidwalker yeah. or something. So, like, I think okay. we still like these two, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. All right, let's do it. Okay. Oh, this is so weird playing with Flame Imp. Flame Imp, if you want this on the right. Yeah. So the way things been been going, like they probably have mad scientists, so they play it here. Mm -hmm. We we probably have a trade pop scientist. Okay, Unless okay, like you don't want to trade. All right. Well, uh, it seems like Buc big time Buccaneers kind of had a little bit of debate, but in the end, you just want to go for the raw stats. I think early on against Hunter. The most important thing is to never give Hunter the ability to stack the board. Uh, when Hunter is able to be ahead and push damage while taking the trades, they're probably going to win the game from that point on. And that's a, a huge draw for Big Time Buccaneers here, finding the Demon Fire, which allows them to uh, continue to develop their own board presence as well as uh, limit Jungle Giant's board, buffing up the Voidwalker here. They can kill the Razor Maw, deny the Beast on board, as well as leave themselves with even more stats. Oh no, Jungle Giant is just drawing more situational cards right now. And Haunted Creeper is definitely a sturdy card, but it's not going to do anything on this board. So Jungle Giant just uses Kill Command to start clearing things off. This is how desperate they are. Yeah, and on a one mana minion. <laughs> it is a very rough spot for the Hunter. Obviously, yeah. you, you much prefer to use Kill Command to, to kill your opponent's large minions to finish your opponent off. Uh, but. The Hunter really can't afford to fall further behind. So without a uh, regional play that turn, decides to just fire off the removal, and Big Time Buccaneers is just going to respond by further filling up the board. Well, almost nothing small that Jungle Giants develops will have uh, a, a big impact, but perhaps it's Pilot Shredder again. That is a card that has co continued to fluctuate in power level as more and more sets develop or uh, come into Hearthstone rotation. And so, you know, there's a, now a slew of opportunities where two mana minions can make an impact or just kind of land dud as a vanilla minion. 
Yeah, I don't even I don't even know all the things to think about when. <laughs> well, still, it, uh, there's still the usual. There's the doomsayers. There's the doomsayers. There's the, there's there's the, the explosive sheets. There's the oh. yeah, of course all the hide in the mill house. And uh, there's also like unstable ghoul, but right now both big time buccaneers kind of has a big play opportunity with the void color. <laughs> look, at, look at them right now. To Toast is like eyebrow raising at jungle giants. That I love how they're able to to see uh, each other across the stage. They're kind of playing off the reactions of one another. Oh yeah. I mean, we saw that last game. Like oh, Jackie's laughing. We must be dead. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, you know when Fire Bat would had the lethal, he was starting to wave already to the big time buccaneers. Like peace. Uh, this is this first game is ours. And uh, I think this play seems relatively straightforward here from the big time Buccaneers. I think it's all about how you want to deal with this pilot shredder if you want to deal with the pilot shredder. Yeah, yeah the, the decision for them. Well, let's let's hear how they want to deal with them themselves. There's a possibility like they might just like we can do a lot of work. Yeah. We may have to worry about Sea Giant. Like four three into the one three. Wow. So keep that so in the back of your mind. like three to five yeah. minutes. Yeah. You just want to go. So, what are they thinking of right now? Should I implosion the shredder or not? Right. Should I Teradax? Oh, that is. Scary. Scary. What is your read on their hand? Uh, they have one kept heart left. Pops out like a 3 2. Yeah, definitely. Then. Ooh. It puts them on the back foot. They have to deal with us, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Firebat's looking at us. So, trying to think if we have a. They're trying to figure out if we have a demon. Yeah. They're trying to. Or, like, which demon, right? I think if they saw our reaction to it and yeah. were like. They might think it's Malganus. Play the Creeper? Yeah. I like that. So, now so he's Tree Treader into M. <laughs> quick shot the flame. Uh, they, definitely want, they definitely want to kill it. The Rees right? are coming they're down they're on both sides. Jungle Giants right? trying to say, what oh. took Buccaneers so long to play Void Caller, which is Talking so many times a correct four mana play? Do they have a demon, perhaps? Or maybe they don't. They're bluffing. Yeah, we saw uh, Ant even talk about how Firebat staring at us. Yeah. He's trying to figure out what we've got. I love it. I love it. And that's why Void Caller has, to this day, been one of my favorite Warlock cards ever in Hearthstone because it introduces so much tension on the board because there is an element of bluffing if you want to play for tempo versus uh, trying to save it for value. And it also makes the environment we're playing in here while the, the players are just across the stage from one another can just stare them down. Yeah, even, yeah. even trying to get a read in the kind of conversations they see the opposing team having. Absolutely. It's like, oh, they're animated. Clearly some sort of difficult conversation perhaps. Ooh, they kill it. And, you know, it's interesting enough, if they went for the opposite sequencing, they would be able to uh, use the kill command on the Despicable Dreadlord. But because they're not sure about what demons, and there's a wide range of them, decide to instead to uh, keep the Pilot Shredder alive. And I think I like the safe play from Jungle Giants. With the Corsair, I believe the Patches is still in the deck. There has not yet been a Pirate. So I believe they, uh, they can't quite clear everything uh, with the Dreadlord here. They could decide to potentially pop the Shredder, see what comes out. Uh, and then potentially use the Dreadlord plus the other uh, minions in play in order to potentially clear off that additional two drop. Though there, there's also a beast in play. So the, uh, despite the fact that both of the kill commands are gone, there's still the threat of, of uh, Houndmaster coming down. That's yeah, a good point. Uh, I do, I'm do. i in favor of clearing everything. Zoo tends to win not necessarily through the big burst, but through the board control. And Despicable Dreadlord is an effect that uh, continues to get value over time. The longer it can stay in play, the higher chance you have to win because of how much damage it generates. Sometimes you see Despicable Dreadlord do five, six damage a game, um, or even more. And that's insane for a five mana four five. All right, so Big Cup Buccaneers going to just let the Dreadlord ability clear off the Shredder. See what's coming out. Whoa. Huh, a bit of an interesting twist. There's a Houndmaster, though, so if, if they had uh, allowed the beast to remain up, they could have gotten uh, somewhat punished by that. Right. Well, Jungle Giants uh, pretty much needs to get onto the board any way possible. They only have two minions this turn. I don't think there's that, that much validity to using a quick shot setup here. And uh, it does seem like they want to set up for the best Dr. Boo possible. The question becomes, Kibler, does Jungle Giants have time to stabilize? Because it seems like they have some tools to fight for the board here. Yeah, with just 14 life here, they, they definitely need to try and play uh, pretty defensively and, and see, see what damage they can absorb. There isn't actually that much threat on the side of Big Time Buccaneers right now, though. They do have uh, four minions in play, but between them, there's only actually six attack. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Like, he's four minions, but uh, it's definitely a low average of damage compared to how many minions are on the board. Um, and, and if I'm Jungle Giants, I'm trying to just make sure to set up for the best Dr. Boom situation possible. Yeah, and that's what they do. They just go ahead and play the Haunted Creeper, Hound Mastered up to defend themselves. It's just unfortunate that Spiggle Dreadlord seems to be the natural predator on spiders. It's true. 
And, and the Dreadlord itself uh, can attack into the spider, Ooh. clear off the, the spiders that come out. Ooh, but there's the power of a whelming pickup, which means that they have even better options to allow them to, uh, to clear through this, popping the, the egg potentially into the spider and then trading off their other minions, uh, allowing Dreadlord to more or less clear off the board. Yeah, so a power of oh, whelming allows them to uh, clear everything oh, and summon that 4-4 and put them in put good position. It seems like they're valuing the uh, smaller tokens as well because they had an opportunity to, uh, to try and utilize some of their smaller minions in this position. I really like where their head's at right now. Because they could have uh, power overwhelming trade into the three four and then use the one ones to trade to the four three and then use the despicable dreadlord, but they value their token bodies as a at the, the front half at least. Yeah. yeah, the dreadlord clears off those small spiders. The Nerubian comes out. Doctor Boom can come down, but there's ten damage already on the board uh, for big time buccaneers plus the bone they're waiting at hand. This one looks like it's very difficult for the Jungle Giants to find a way out. Yeah, and the, the problem with Quickshot is your hand has to be empty in order to get value. So Jungle Giants going with Dr. Boom, and it is one of the most powerful cards. It's even golden, but even the, the mightiest of golden Dr. Booms has to bend to the power of Bone Mares and even the top depth Doom Guard. Toast <laughs> pretending like they're... Uh, oh, actually, no, he's searching Deep for a reaction. Yeah. He's searching for a reaction, trying to see... How will Jungle Giants react to a top dev Doom Guard? But they are dead, and that's going to be a, a game for the big time Buccaneers, which is important for the overall tiebreaker score here. Yeah, Jungle Giants will win the match two games to one, uh, but big time Buccaneers does pick up that win, which can help them overall in the event. Love the showmanship, uh, definitely from the big time Buccaneers. It seems like Toast was uh, having a lot of fun, but in the end, Jungle Giants takes the series two to one. And a good thing for me and Admiral as well, because we put our faith in Jungle Giants, and hopefully they don't make us look silly. Yeah, I mean, Toast did say the most important thing to being a Hearthstone player was flair. <laughs> That's right. So the first treasure, which is equivalent to a point, again, for people who are tuning in midway, uh, Jungle Giants is, has one treasure, one win. Uh, we will also award one more treasure to a team with the most game wins at the end of the day. We'll go ahead and toss over to Raven, who's at the tavern with our winning team. And congratulations, guys. It was a pretty strong victory overall. You did lose the last game, and as the guys are saying over there, every single game counts. But first off, how, how are you feeling about the wild section of this tournament? Because you look pretty confident in that one. Well, we have fast decks. Um, it took the Pirate Warrior one more turn than I expected to crush their souls. But we'll settle with turn five, I think. Yeah, it still seemed quick enough to me. And, uh, and Fireback, do you think uh, all your wild decks were very aggressive for this one? Is that something that was planned because it's wild and there's access to so many good aggro cards? Uh, yeah, wild decks, aggro cards are really, really good. But as well, combo decks are really common in wild. And combo decks just get flat out destroyed by aggressive decks. So we were hoping a lot of players would be bringing something like the Freeze Mage that we could really take advantage of that with. Yeah, and it got the job done. And finally, Jackie, obviously playing against your teammate, Ali Straza. Um, how was that? Was there much sort of banter between you two beforehand? And are you going to you know, rub this in a little bit that your team beat hers? A little bit, yeah. We were against each other for the October roll as well. So it's like it's, it's, we seem to just be against each other all the time. But um, no, we, we get on well. So it's friendly banter. Yeah, all friendly fun in the tavern. But congratulations again, guys. And we'll go back in and check with Frodan and Kibler.